I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, February the 2nd, 2016. Former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert pled guilty today to two counts of obstruction of justice. The admission was part of a plea deal. The ex-leader was then convicted on both counts by the Jerusalem Magistrates Court. The sentence set by the plea deal is six months in jail and a fine of about $12,000. The six months will be served concurrently with Olmert's previous sentence of 18 months. The court has until February the 10th to say whether it accepts the sentence. If you recall, the case against Olmert relates to the Holy Land real estate corruption scandal. At the end of last year, the Supreme Court partially accepted Olmert's appeal of his conviction in 2014 of bribery charges in the case, but upheld his conviction for other charges and reduced his sentence from six years to 18 months. Olmert is scheduled to begin the prison term later this month. A partial closure on Ramallah was lifted today by the IDF. The closure of several roads into and out of the city yesterday followed the shooting attack on Sunday carried out by a member of the Palestinian Authority Police Force, which injured three IDF soldiers near the Jewish settlement of Beit El. Ramallah is the seat of the Palestinian Authority. The Jerusalem Post reports that the PA police released a statement after the attack praising the gunman Amjad Sukari, calling him a brave martyr. French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius announced on Friday that France hopes to organize an international peace summit and that if it failed, France would formally recognize a Palestinian state. Fabius told a conference of French diplomats in Paris that in the next few weeks, France would prepare for the summit, bringing together Israelis and Palestinians, as well as representatives from the United States, the European Union and Arab countries, to work towards reaching a two-state solution. Fabius said if this attempt to achieve a negotiated solution reaches a dead end, we will take responsibility and recognize the Palestinian state. Israel has always maintained that a peace deal can only be reached by direct talks between Israel and the Palestinians, not through any unilateral recognition or action. The Jerusalem Post cited unnamed Israeli officials saying that the French announcement only gives an excuse to PA President Mahmoud Abbas to not negotiate or compromise in direct talks with Netanyahu. And B'nai B'rith International criticized Fabius's remarks as well saying France's announcement will, quote, more than likely inhibit the pace of talks rather than facilitate peace negotiations, asking why would the PA talk when it knows already that it has French recognition. It suggests, they said, a baffling example of backwards diplomacy. The Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations announced its 42nd leadership mission to Israel. The trip will convene February the 14th through the 18th and include over 100 leaders from the conference's 52 member organizations, as well as the participation of its National Leadership Council. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will address the mission at opening dinner on February the 14th, and Israeli President Reuven Rivlin will speak to the group on Thursday the 18th. The group will also meet with other government leaders, as well as cabinet ministers and analysts, to address the current challenges facing Israel and the world Jewry. Over 50 headstones were toppled over at a Jewish cemetery in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Local paper The News Sentinel reported that the damage was discovered yesterday afternoon. No graffiti was found, but the incident is thought to have been intentional, with Fort Wayne Jewish Cemetery Association President Dan Zweig noting that it must have taken at least three people to push over each granite headstone. The local police department is investigating. And in Portland, Maine, a new nonprofit group has set its sights on helping to repair local Jewish cemeteries and preserve the legacy of the area's Jewish community. This according to a report by local paper The Forecaster. The paper cites Southern Maine Jewish Cemetery Association President Wayne Goodman, who said his group had taken title to several local Jewish cemeteries and would work to maintain, preserve and restore them. Looking now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, February the 2nd, 
At 7 o'clock, Elena Procario Foley of Iona College and Rabbi Noah Marins of the American Jewish Committee talk about the future of Jewish-Catholic relations in a program of AJC Westchester Fairfield and Iona College. At 8 o'clock, Executive Director of the Northeast Region of Stand With Us, Shahar Azani, discusses the ways in which the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement is an expression of a new anti-Semitism. That's in a Stand With Us program from the JCC of Stamford, Connecticut. At 9 o'clock, Mark Golub sits down with Irvin Unger, who is the leading authority on the life and work of illustrator Arthur Schick, on how the political artist used his work to fight Hitler. At 10 o'clock, director of the AJC's Kopelman Institute for American-Jewish-Israeli Relations, Dr. Stephen Baim, talks about the complicated future of the U.S.-Israeli relationship in an AJC program from Beit Torah in Mount Kisco, New York. And coming up right after this newscast tonight, the new JBS series Election 2016 at 6.30. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, January the 2nd, 2016. I'm Tisha Bader.